here this morning. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, lost track of what time it was. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord on this on this Labor Day weekend. So glad you're able to be with us today. Uh, wanted to uh, mention a few announcements to you and some prayer requests. Um, but very excited today to have with us our 180 Ministries out of DeWitt, Arkansas. You are in for a treat, and it, it, it's it's um, very exciting the things that go on with that. I, I've got to see some. You're going to be able to hear some awesome things today, and it, it, it's going to preach itself um, to you. So just very excited about that. Um, wanted to also mention to you that tomorrow, you know, tomorrow's Labor Day. We will not be having prayer meeting tomorrow on Labor Day. So enjoy your time of, uh, with family or friends or, or, or what have you. And then next Sunday evening, uh, next Sunday evening on the 12th, we're going to be doing a prayer meeting to commemorate 9-11. But in that prayer meeting, it's going to be hymns, prayer meeting. We're going to be praying to certain hymns that are going to be done. And, and so it, it, it's going to be an exciting thing to have and to be a part of. Most of you know that in September, young people know for sure that at the schools they have CU at the Poe. Uh, last year, most CU at the Poe's were canceled. Uh, they didn't allow some people on, 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 on the premises. And we're not sure if the schools are going to we'll be finding that out this week, if the schools are going to be allowing us on campus or not this year. But on the Wednesday of CU at the Poe, that evening, um, in church, we're going to be having a special service, and we want young people, adults, this is a month of prayer anyhow. Um, we have a special guest speaker who's going to be with us on that night, um, Brother Caleb Gordon. And Caleb preached here about eight years ago. Caleb is a, and he's an Alabama guy, that's all right. Um, and he, and, and, uh, and yeah, Gordon, he is an Alabama fan. Um, he's an Alabama fan, but we still like him anyhow. Um, but Caleb is an incredible preacher, and he's going to be here for that Wednesday night um, to minister to us and um, and do that during that see you at the poll time. And you're just you're just going to be thoroughly blessed on that Wednesday night to have um, somebody like him. And then um, I want to let you know again, it's at the end of the month, but on on the 29th we're going to be doing our blood drive again. And again, we're doing six blood drives this year. Um, I am. I get word each each week from Red Cross they are critically low of blood, and let me kind of tell you how this impacted me personally in my family um, just a few weeks ago. Um, the importance of giving blood because of COVID and the things that have happened with that, a lot of people have just stopped giving blood. My aunt had to have open heart surgery. She lives right outside of Tampa, and it was a very obviously a very critical surgery. She went in in July to have her surgery, and as she went in in July to have her surgery, they had to cancel her surgery because they didn't have enough blood on hand just in case they, they knew they had to give her blood just in case she had, uh, if there was complications. So her surgery, an open heart surgery that really needed to be done then um, was, was postponed for three weeks before they had enough blood in to assure that she had a safe surgery. Now she did have a safe surgery, but if she had had an emergency during that time, because of a lack of blood donation, my aunt could have lost her life. And so if you are physically able, um, give blood. We have sign-up sheets before you. You can sign up online through uh, Red Cross's Red Cross app And um, if you're physically able. But not only if, if you can't give blood, there's another way you can do it. As we start putting it out on Facebook, share that. Um, we actually have a lot of people from the community that come and give blood, and, and we, we continue to need that. And... And so um, it is important, and we would love to have at least 25 pints of blood. Anything over 20 is, is, is great, and, uh, but if we can have 25 pints of blood, 25 pints of blood helps 75 people. Now, how often can you do something where you spend about 30 minutes um, doing something that you can help three people? Everybody that gives a pint of blood can help three people. If you're one of those that can do a double donation, at one time with what they call power bloods, you can help six people. So um, so it is something that is critically important. So we, we encourage you, again, if you can't give blood, share it, encourage other people who can. Um, if, if we if we overbook, then, then they, they, they'll, they'll let people know that they can't come, but um, I'd rather be overbooked than underbooked for that. So again, we want you to certainly help us with that. Um, we're gonna pray for some needs, and there's some very serious needs right now that we want you to remember in prayer. Remember Sister Wanda Stanley? She's been in the hospital since Monday. 
and she's improving somewhat. But remember her in prayer. She needs a healing and, and recovery from, from, from her illness. And uh, pray that those numbers go up in a safe way for her. Um, remember Brother Billy Walls. Uh, he needs a healing in his arm right now. And, and I know that God can help him with that. Richard Keller. Uh, remember Richard Keller in prayer. Richard is in the hospital. They don't know what exactly is going on with him. Uh, remember him in prayer. You know, this is going to be a, a tough day. And this is the day of, of, of his brother-in-law Jim's funeral. And uh, Richard's not going to be able to be there for that. And most of you know how close they are to one another. But remember Richard in prayer for his recovery and Sister Patsy. And just ask that you remember the whole Watson family. And I know that there are a lot of needs. We have a lot of needs, but don't we have a God that can take care of them? We believe that God can take care of them. But I would be remiss if I, without starting service, I have a beautiful, great niece that's here today. she got red, bright red hair sitting over there. And she looked at her uncle. Now, she doesn't call me. She don't say anything really yet. Uh, but she won't call me Uncle Danny or Pastor Danny. She'll call me Uncle Jerome. And but I tell you, if you want to see, uh, if you want to see a pretty one right there, there's a pretty little redheaded, uh, about nine months old right there. Um, and and of course she saw me and she got smiling. You know? Now y'all see me and y'all laugh. She saw me and she smiled. And so I'm glad to have Phelan Panky with me. Why don't you give Phelan Panky a hand clap uh, for being with us today? All right. Would you stand to your feet? We want to go before the Lord in prayer. And ask God to touch us and minister to us. Heavenly Father, we love you. And we thank you, dear God, for the opportunity as always to come into your house, dear God. To worship you, dear Lord. To, to, to be in your word, dear God. To, to, to hear great testimony of, your, of what you do in people's lives, dear God. I pray in the name of Jesus, dear God, today. Lord, that you touch the needs of your people, dear God. Lord, that you speak to our hearts, dear God. And that even lives can be transformed, dear God. We thank you, Lord, for transforming work that you do in people's lives. God, I pray in the name of Jesus today. I pray, dear God, that you would touch Sister Wanda, dear God, and give her healing and recovery. We pray for Brother Billy Walls, dear God, that you, you touch his body, touch his arm, dear God. We pray, Lord, for Richard Keller, dear God. Lord, give him healing right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, dear God, that you touch the Watson family. Lord, that you minister to them, dear God. And we thank you, Lord, for all your goodness. And we honor you. And we lift our hands to you right now and bring you praise. Would you worship the Lord right now? Would you honor him in the name of Jesus?
I got a chance to talk to, to Ron back in July, and, uh, and we got the schedule of this. But this, this has been in the works for a long time with the kingdom of God. Because it goes back for, for what's happening today, just for a grandmother who prayed, a grandfather who prayed, and, and so many who prayed and, and, and seen God do some amazing things. And, I, you know, I, a scripture that has been on my mind since we scheduled this as Romans chapter 12, where he says, Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Right now, you're going to hear about a transforming ministry. And so I, I want to ask Ron if he'll come right here and he's going to share with you. Well, they, they drove two hours and 45 minutes at least to get here. So give them a hand clap for being here. Good morning. Let me get my thing set up. All right. Well, thanks for having us. My name is Ron Warmington. Um, we're with Arm 180, Arkansas Recovery Ministries. Uh, we brought a few guys with us. So we've got a staff member and we got three residents. And one of those residents is graduating next week, Brother John back there. So you guys are going to get to hear some testimonies. Um, we got a local guy. His name is Justin. He's right there, and he's excited. And um, all of them are excited just to get up here and just to just to tell you what the Lord's done and, and what they've been doing in their new life. Amen. Um, so we're very grateful, and you know, just the fact that just the fact that a church wants an addiction ministry to come, you know, and present and give testimonies, man, that tells me y'all doing church right. right? Okay? That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be inviting in the broken. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And that's what I see. And uh, we're very grateful for that. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the ministry. And uh, I won't take too long because I want you to hear the testimonies because that's, that's what it's all about. Amen? <coughs> so we are, we're, we're R180, and that's what that stands for, is Arkansas Recovery Ministries. Um, the 180 represents... The turnaround, it represents repentance. Amen? And uh, forgive me if I'm focusing on this side because most of this side has already heard this. So. Um, but yeah, but that's what it stands for. And then the arm, and uh, we found a verse that goes great with it. So the verse that we stand on uh, is Isaiah 59 1. And it says, The Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, Amen. nor is ear too deaf to hear your cry. Awesome. Yeah. What a statement! Yeah. What a promise. Now, the next verse, it talks about the separation from sin, from God, because of the sin and how he does it here. So, our number one goal is to get these men in this ministry and get them a relationship with Jesus. Amen. That way they're not separated anymore. We were separated too long. We are running around doing whatever we wanted to do, getting what we wanted at all costs, even though we hated it. So I, I don't want you to think that, you know, a drug addict is just this happy guy running around using and getting high and terrorizing everything. No, they're miserable. They're 100% miserable. I've never met somebody that's addicted to drugs that was happy. It just doesn't happen. And they need the truth. And they need men that's been through it to tell them the truth. The ones that are going to pay it forward. I think of Jesus, when Jesus told Peter, he said, the devil's coming to sift you. And he says, I pray when you make it through that, you're going to turn around and you're going to use it to strengthen your brethren. And that's exactly what's going on. It's like the oldest form of discipleship. Um, we've got anywhere between 18 and 24 guys at any given time. Right now we have 20. Uh, we've got one graduating right now as we speak. Um, another one graduating next week. So God's good. He's moving. Um, yeah, so that's our verse. Uh, so we're, we're seven months to a year, faith-based recovery program. Um, most men graduate at seven months. We have some that have to stay up to a year, just depending on the progress. 
Some actually choose to stay a year. Sometimes their mind doesn't start healing until about month four or five, and then it's almost time to graduate. And the smart ones that are honest with themselves, they'll say, you know what? I'm just now getting it. I want to stay here. So we offer that option. Um, we take men that are 21 and older and the ones that are ready for a new life. This is not a get out of jail free ministry. Um, our interview process is pretty strict. We take the ones who are broken and are ready for a new life. Not here to get you out of jail. Um, if that incorporates itself, then praise the Lord, right? I, I was that guy that was sitting behind bars that needed a place to go, that needed another chance. So I know how it feels, but I was ready. Um, we don't take sex offenders. We don't take men that are extremely violent. We operate under safe sanctuary policy, probably just like you guys do. And we spend a lot of our time at our home church at the Life Fellowship in d -Wit. Um, they've taken great care of us, uh, the pastor over there, the elders, uh, a lot of those are actually the teachers. So, you know, you've got men that's, that's been there, that's got some wisdom, that, that a lot of them have actually been through addiction. And they turn around and they pay it forward and they, they teach our guys. And we've got, we've got a group of amazing teachers. Uh, um, we've got a, a board that is just phenomenal. Um, they just love these guys. The church loves them. And they just love them. That's what they need. So it is a free program. Um, we ask for nothing. Well, we do ask that they, they come up with $50 to buy two shirts. If they can't do that, I understand we'll get them a shirt. You know, it's no big deal. But to come in, it costs zero. Uh, they earn their keep. We go around and we work Wednesday through Saturday. They're in classes all day Monday and Tuesday and go to several other classes throughout the week and at nighttime, and then we have a one hour long Bible study Monday through Saturday before we start our day from 7 to 8 o'clock. Um, we have had 17, as of today, we will have 18 graduates, 34 baptisms, and three marriages about to be four marriages. <laughs> we, uh, we have a visitation day on Sundays, so on visitation day, the family gets to come out. Uh, they have to be at church. So they can sit with them at church and visit. After that, we have potluck and we have a family visitation day where we go out to the ministry and uh, we just have, have a good time and we just fellowship to around 3 o'clock. Because that's, that's a huge part of it is, is these relationships that are, that are needy to be mended. First of all, they've got to, they've got to make peace with God. And then they can start making peace with everybody else. Um, we do have an exit plan. Everybody that's left this ministry has had a, a, a good job to go to uh, with good people, um, working on getting a transition house started. Uh, they get driver's license. If they have court stuff, we try to make sure all that's taken care of, um, even, up, even, even to the point of DHS cases. You know, we help out with DHS cases. Um, let me see. And that, boy, that is the quickest I've ever done that. <laughs> Amen. Um, so who in here has experienced addiction? You don't have to raise your hand. You all have. Maybe not, maybe not you yourself, but somebody you know is very close to you. And I guarantee if you think hard enough, you've known several people that's died. I lost count of the friends that I lost. I went through John 3, 7, uh, 316. Sorry, 317 for the girls. Uh, 316, 11 years ago. And since then, I've lost count. After about three years of being out, I was hearing somebody that I knew that I was close to in that ministry were dying for a little bit. And it's happening more now than it ever has before. Yeah. Right. Because they're putting fentanyl in everything. Yeah. Um, you know, it's being in the South, usually meth is the number one go to drug. And for the most part, it is, but um, opiates is, is running a strong second. And the thing about opiates is it will kill you a lot quicker than meth. Um, it'll kill you, you know, you're doing what you think you can handle, but you have no idea what's in it. And the fentanyl's in it, it is killing you. And it's sad, it's sad. So our job is to pull as many people out as we can until Jesus comes back and we don't have to deal with it anymore, amen. 
So, saying that, I, I just want, I, I think one of my callings is to, is to have people look at addiction in a different way. I'm going to tell a quick story because I got reminded on the way up here. So, they did an experiment on rats. Um, I don't know when they did it, but they did it. Okay. And now this is coming off a video. I watched the video and I'm telling you guys because it's great information. So, they had this thing called Rat Park. And what they did before that, they had one little rat in a cage and they put cocaine here and then they put water here. And they didn't have nothing else to do. So they had cocaine, water, and food, all right? Well, what do you think he chose? The water and the food at first until he found the cocaine. And then he basically went back and forth to the cocaine until he died. And he stopped eating and he stopped drinking once he found that. And he was by himself. Now, then they did another, and they had a, a, a station set up, and it was called Rat Park, and it was probably 50 of them. And they had the, the wheels and the tubes, and they had all this stuff to do. And there they had cocaine, water, and food. Now, what do you think happened? They didn't want the cocaine. They chose relationships. They chose relationships with their other buddies. And that's, and that's one of the main things that we try to do in exit plan. Is we try to get them plugged into a good church, wherever that may be. Maybe it's us, maybe it's not. We have a lot that are actually relocating to be with, to be a part of our church. Well, you got to get them around the right people. you got to get them around people that are going to call them out on their junk. Yeah. That are going to tell them the truth in love. Okay? that are going to love them unconditionally, where there's no agenda. It's amazing. When you get a guy out, you change the place he lives, and then you change the people that are around him, the people that are going to encourage him. It makes life a lot easier. And that's just not for a drug addict. That's for everybody. And, and, and you know, COVID has done its best to stop that. But we ain't going to let him stop. Amen. So... And a little bit about me, I'm, I am 42 years old. I was a junkie for 25 years. I was hopeless. I was very much suicidal. I tried to kill myself. I've been to, I've overdosed several times. I've been to detox several times. Uh, I've been to John 316 twice. I went to another ministry. Uh, by the grace of God, I've been clean for six years. <coughs> for over six years. July 4th was my six year mark. That represents my independence day. But it represents my dependence, the name of Jesus. Right. That's what I mean. Um, before we get started, does anybody have any questions about the ministry and how we operate? Okay, amen. Justin, got a question? D. Wynn, Arkansas. Yes. Yep. All right, Justin, come on up, brother. Justin's one of the ones that chose to relocate. He got a good job. He, uh, he lives three houses down from me. And um, he's about to have two other graduates move in with him. Amen. And we love him. And uh, boy, he was a hot mess when he came to us. Tell you what. <laughs> hey, y'all. Just want to start out by thanking y'all for uh, letting us come here. My, uh, my grandmother and grandfather have been going to church here for a long time. My grandmother is Kathy Hopper. And, uh, when, uh, when I was in the ministry, she wrote me. We can't have phones or anything. She wrote me a letter, and I, I wrote her back, you know, saying I couldn't wait to get out. And being a new Christian, I'll come to church with them. Unfortunately, I didn't get to do that, but this just, uh, this just means the world to me right now. I get to come here and do this, especially at our church. I know she's, she's looking down and quite pleased. I hope this uh, it meant a lot to me. She got to see me this way now, where I am, and uh, that that kind of eased the pain a little bit and helped with that. But I just need to thank all y'all for being our church family, and uh, you know it's, it, it means a lot to me right now to be here. But I'll just start by uh, telling my story a little bit. I'm from here in Bible, Arkansas. I'm uh, 29 years old. I went to Armorell uh, Armorell High School. Come from a wonderful family. The bottom right there, right now. And uh, I, uh, I 
I got off on a bad path. You know. I, uh, I was valedictorian in my high school in 2010. I went to Arkansas State on a full-ride scholarship. I graduated with, with a bachelor's degree in biology. And uh, I just say all that to let you guys know that uh, now, you know, there's a lot of stigma with addiction and addicts. I just say all that to, to point out the fact that it can happen to anybody. That's right. And uh, I've been struggling with my addiction for about five years or so to prescription pain pills, pain pills, opiates. And uh, it had a hold on me more than I could, ever could have imagined. I moved down to Florida three or four years ago, ready to get clean, clean up. And uh, it was way harder than I ever would have thought. I thought I was ready then, and I guess I had to go through way more and be broken, like Ron said, to finally, uh, to finally get it. And uh, really, I was, I was an atheist most of my life. And I studied biology. It was really easy for me to lean on that and uh, never look for God. And you know, I, I moved down to Florida and I went to, I went to six rehabs. And uh, one fella sat me down and he found out I, I didn't believe in anything. And they don't really push anything in particular. They just want you to be spiritual. They tell you you can choose the doorknob as your higher power. But anyhow, they, one guy told, sat me down and he said, this is not going to work unless you believe in something. And so I don't know, since then that was really kind of like a, a very key moment in my life where I, I kind of just started to look for God. And uh, to seek him out a little bit. And they told me God couldn't would if he ever saw it. And, uh, you know, I went on for years. And I really didn't know what that meant. I used to pray to my friend. I used to just pray. But my grandmother had a big part, played a big part in that. She, uh, every time I talked to her, you know, she said, uh, Jesus says, you just got to pray. And I know you guys all prayed for me. And she prayed for me over and over and over. And I know you guys played a very big part in me being where I am now. You know, I went on, and really, I, I, I think I finally started to find find the higher power or whatever, you know, just looking for something. And um, I do feel like God brought me to On the Navy Ministries to kind of sit me down and show me exactly what that was. And I mean, I, I went to church a little here and there when I was a kid, and uh, I think he brought me there to really show me exactly what that means. And uh, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And within three months, I hadn't read the Bible most of my life. And within three or four months, I was teaching class to the new guys coming in and uh, just did my best to soak it all up and really dive into it. It's amazing the way the Lord works. I, I, I tell you right now, my worst days now are better than my best days a year ago. And, uh, I really I wanted, really want to do this because it's, it would mean the world to me to get any, even one person from Bible down there and get them some help. You know, I didn't know anything about the place. A lot of people don't. Uh, I just say, spread the word. You know, I'm sure you got a friend of a friend or somebody in your close family that needs help. And uh, you know, just spread the word. Like Brother Frank said, share it on Facebook. Anything. You know, contact me. I'm sure somebody. I'm from Blaw, a small town. Somebody knows me or somebody's hurt. You know, we can. Uh, I'm more than happy to talk to anybody that needs help. Ron Wood, anybody. And so that's. That's really why I wanted to come and, and just to honor my grandmother as well and thank all you all and uh, just reach out to us, use us. It's an amazing place. I needed it. Uh, I had to be broken to get there and a lot of people will. And, uh, just continue to pray for them if you do know anybody struggling. And uh, there, there is help there. Okay. So I just want to thank all y'all for having us. Thank y'all very much. There's not much more powerful thing, uh, anything more powerful than a praying mom or a praying grandma. Yeah, right. Amen. I know she's happy right now. Amen. Um, Justin was, he's a pretty intelligent dude. <laughs> and me, I'm not so smart. And, um, but I believe my faith is strong. Amen. And, um, and that's how I teach. Amen. And he always had questions. Um, most of the time, he already knew the entries, I think. He was just trying to see where it went. But, um, yeah, after about three or four months, he started actually, he was at that point in the ministry to where he was kind of in a valley, you know, about that three or four month mark. You think you got it all figured out. You think that, that you can go out and do your thing and, uh, you know, you've been studying and you got your tools. And, but that's actually, that's actually the most crucial part of the time you're there is what 
you do from month three to month four, because that's when it's time to start giving back. That's when it's time to start going into the other men. And we sat down and we had a meeting, and he was like, absolutely, that's what I want to do. So we did that for the last three months he was there, and it worked out really well. Um, this next guy, come on up here, John Cooper. He's a Mississippi boy, high tide. Yeah. <laughs> come on up here, brother. I love his testimony because addiction comes in all different forms. Um, you know, sometimes you get injured. Sometimes you get prescribed something, and you figure out, oh, this makes me feel good, even when I'm out in pain. You know, you know the right words to say to the right doctors, and you can get what you want. And I was the worst at that. I was a doctor shopper. Um, but it comes in all forms, and sometimes it's passed down through, through generations. It is. Um, when Jesus healed the blind man, they asked him, they said, what sin did he commit to be blind? He said, nothing. They said, well, what sins did he, his father commit to make him blind? He said, this is why he's blind. So God can get glory right now in this situation. So sometimes it's passed down. Sometimes we make bad decisions, okay? And it's self-inflicted. And sometimes it's not. So I, I just, I love his testimony because you get to see another side from it, okay? And he's been through a lot. And this is this guy right here, is, he's tough as nails. Because he went through full-blown withdrawals from opiates the first two weeks while he was in the ministry. And he did not give up. And he wanted to give up. But prayer. But prayer. Amen. So. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is John Cooper. I'm 32 years old from Starkville, Mississippi. That area was probably the closest town you probably know. Nobody ever heard of my town. But uh, anyways, I uh, had a pretty normal childhood. You know, grew up in the country. Uh, Great family, good parents, made sure I've always had everything I needed. Uh, probably spoiled me a little bit too much, to be honest. But uh, I was always kind of a hyperactive child growing up, you know. I wouldn't tell the problem child or nothing like that. But they started noticing something went right when I got about 12 years old. And I was just kind of lazing around and sick all the time. And uh, next thing you know, I ended up taking me to a doctor and I got admitted to a hospital. And after about a week, they couldn't figure out what was wrong. I was diagnosed with uh, leukemia. And um, so they sent me up to St. Jude, Memphis, where I underwent cancer treatment for about four years. And that was a, a really trying time in my family's life. But at that point, you know, with cancer comes all types of aches and pains. And so I was given all types of pain medications and things of that nature, uh, which, you know, I took it and then didn't have any problems. But uh, in the after that, you know, uh, about 16 when I stopped getting uh, cancer treatments, and uh, from that point on, I, I started getting better. I had a pretty normal, pretty normal teenage years, I guess, the best I could consider the situation. But uh, I found out when I was 19 that due to some cancer treatments that it actually ruined my liver, and I had to get a liver transplant. So uh, it was July 9th, 2010, I was, called, uh, I was called in to go to Memphis, Tennessee to get a liver transplant. Everything went wonderful after that. Uh, as far as healing and recovery, I went in on a Monday morning, walked out on my own Friday afternoon. Uh, they cut me from here all the way to here, which is a, it's a pretty gnarly scar to see. But uh, let's see where we are. Oh, after that, you know, I was prescribed painkillers for that. And which, you know, for a little while after that, I kind of gotten off of them. But uh, when I was about 21, I went through, I guess you call it a, a bad breakup with a girl. I was serious with for about three years. And after that, I, I just wanted to, you know, just do really whatever I wanted to do. I mean, I just anything to kind of cover up pain. So I started doing a lot of partying and things like that. And uh, I ended up you know, finding a, a source to get painkillers, and I knew that that would make me feel better and take away my cares for a little while. And so, you know, I started doing it, you know, every Friday night, and the next thing you know, it'd be a Friday and Saturday. And before you know it, it's full-blown seven days a week. And uh, 
it starts to make it it takes over i mean it literally hijacks you next thing you know you're it, it's almost like uh, you're there but you're just watching yourself do things that you have no control over it's the most helpless feeling in the world because you know it's not you and everybody else knows it's not you but there's really nothing they can do or say to shake you out of it and uh this cycle went on for about 10 years and uh, you know, in and out of with 30 day treatments and things like that, always going straight back to it. Uh, it, it caused, I, I got married when I was 23 and it, you know, I was married for three years and through the cycle of addiction, I ended up uh, get, going through a divorce from my wife. And you know, I, I couldn't understand why because you know, as far as I knew, we loved each other and all that. And when I asked her why, she said, well, mainly because I'm tired of having to wake up in the middle of the night to make sure you're still breathing. I was completely out of control. I was selfish. And it was, uh, it was just a nightmare that I couldn't wake up from. Um, and then we kind of fast forward, and that cycle pretty much kept on going even after that until about... Uh, January, January last year, uh, and actually the year before that, I I decided I was going to get sober. Uh, I went back to college, and I, I started dating. I started seeing this girl, uh, and she had a couple of kids, and we moved in together. And I was doing good for a while. I really was uh, on a normal path. Family was proud of me, and then one compromise in that, you know, when I. Was, you know, one compromise, one pill put me right back on the path to addiction that, uh, you know, I mean, it just gets worse every time. And before I know it, I gave her no choice but to leave. And so at this point, I completely gave up on myself. I decided at that point that I was going to drink alcohol and I was going to take pills and I was not going to stop until I was just dead. At that point, I figured there was no hope for me. But, uh, I kept going on like that for about a month, eating and drinking nothing. That's all I died I had. I was just working all day long and just to supply my habit until I, I realized, you know, the Lord obviously was not letting me die. And so I finally said, you know, God, you know, help me. I mean, that, that's all I could really say at that point. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's funny how word of mouth works and the Lord uses that. Uh, my next door neighbor at the time uh, happened to go to uh, college uh, with one of our director hunters, his mother, and she had been looking on Facebook and talking to her old friend and seeing how well he was doing. And so she, I was just talking to her. She was a great neighbor. We just chit chat. One of the best friends I have in the world. And she mentioned this place to me. And I said, you know, I, I have nothing else to lose. Uh, I've lost everything, so you know, why not give it a try? And then so I ended up coming here in early February last year. I think February 7th. No, not, not last year. This year, February 7th. And uh, I, I mean, I just came just straight out of it because at, at that point I, I was living in my truck. And the only thing I could get my parents to help me with is to get me here. They weren't doing anything else for me at the time. So, uh, yeah, it dropped me off here. And I thought I was fine, but when I came here because I, I still had drugs in my system, but the next day, I mean, it was, I was just full blown withdrawal. All I could do was pretty much just shake. And I mean, I was probably about 40 pounds less than what I am now. I came in at 138 pounds. Now I'm knocking on 180 now, praise the Lord. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I came here to a great ministry. I had a great group of brothers in that house and staff members and people in the community that loved me when I absolutely could not love myself because I hated who I was. And, you know, because of the Jesus in them, they had the heart to love me and accept me. And I'm just so, so blessed uh, to have them as a family now. I really am. And... Uh, like I can say I graduate next week. I relocated to Arkansas because these are the people I want to be around. These are the people I want to do life with. And uh, I thank y'all so much for having us today. Uh, and that's really all I have.
Good job. Amen. Come on, Anthony. So this guy right here, he, he's a good friend of mine. I've known him for a few years, and uh, he had to come back through. Um, you know, but but this time he, last time he was he was anxious. He graduated. He was ready and anxious to get out, and get a job, and start life. But this time God set him down, and um, he's laid down his life for the other men that are in the program. Is what's happening, okay? Because he's doing an internship right now, and that'll be over in a month, and then he will be coming on as paid staff. So this is this is my brother Anthony Pimberley, and um, he's got a heart for the Lord and, and for these these guys, and we'll let him share. Amen. Hello, <coughs> hello everyone. How are y'all? Uh, your preacher sort of stole my line from me earlier, from me earlier uh, about you guys being a beautiful church family and you looking nice. So, uh, boy, harsh just to go in. Well, I usually get up here and open with a joke, but I didn't bring my crop and all that, so uh, maybe I'll start this off a different way. Uh, do you know who the best financier in the Bible is? Noah. He floated stock while the whole world was in liquidation. All right. So anyways, uh, yeah, Ron said I had to come back through for a second try, and that's that's uh, that's glory to God right there because I ran towards him, you know, and I, I didn't run away from him like I've been doing my whole life. Uh, and I didn't even know I was running away from him my whole life because uh, I was never taught about him, you know. Uh, I'm 38 years old. Uh, I was, I used to think I was brought into the world in, on the wrong foot. But I know now that I was brought in at exactly the right time, the right place, the right conditions to get me right here today. So praise God for that. Uh, I've suffered every type of abuse that you guys can imagine, you grown ups can imagine for a child to go through. Uh, so as I got older, uh, I found out that this is not how you show ones that you love, love. You know, so that gave way to. So the, uh, the sadness gave way to anger. I was an angry person. Uh, I burnt things, I stole things, I, I robbed people. I, I did everything bad that a person ain't supposed to do, pretty much. I spent the better part of a, part of a decade in prison. And uh, boy, I don't know, I, I was just lost. I was lost. And uh, one day, not even knowing about God and not being taught about him, I, I did. I was at my I was at the end of my rope and I called out to him and, and he heard me. And there was just no denying that he heard me, even though I didn't know him. And I guess some of y'all have felt that feeling in your chest when you realize when you realize. You know, you know. And uh my hair standing up. But uh I knew God was there and uh that started me on my journey to pursuing, you know, and uh, so, so that's what I did. And as I got into the Bible, I uh, I found out that I had a father that cared about me. Uh, never had one of them, so that right there said a lot about me. And uh, I also found in the Bible that he laid down a, a nice set of rules, not rules, but regulations on how I should be acting and how I should live my life and how I should treat people. And uh, I thank him for that because uh, I wasn't doing nothing right in my life. And, uh, and and right now I'm not perfect and I'm not never going to be perfect, but uh, I can now walk around with my head up. Uh, I can make eye contact with you all today. Uh, I went through life. I probably had not looked in a person's eyes for 30 plus years, you know, so... Praise God for that. Um, yes. Okay, so as uh, Justin kind of hit on and Ron kind of hit on, you know, uh, it comes in many different shapes and forms and all that. And uh, I don't know. I guess just I guess I'm just saying uh, y'all know someone in addiction or with problems or whatever, whatever. But I also know that prayer works because as I started going through this, I received a letter from my mom. And uh, I didn't talk to her much. I pushed everybody away because darkness was just regular for me and that's where I went. So uh, anyways, I got this letter as I got deeper into my walk and she uh, said, uh, Anthony, I'm glad you finally realized how much you're worth. And uh, 
She knows it only took 25 years of prayer. But she said it. But she said it got done. So that's it. I remember that. Um, well, I'm kind of nervous. Uh, and uh, I'm just thinking of some things. But yes. Praise God. I'm sorry, guys. I, they're hard to follow up. Y'all have a good day. He touched on the abuse. Um, a lot of you might not know, but but most every person who, who goes through addiction has been abused. Okay, um, we same here. I was abused every way you can think of it. Okay, so you know maybe next time when we see somebody that's that you know is just out of their mind and strung out, maybe we need to think to ourselves, what caused that? You know, what caused that? Because something caused that. No, like we said earlier, nobody plans on being a drug addict or an alcoholic. Alcohol is just as bad. I've seen people experience worse withdrawals coming off of alcohol than heroin. Okay? Just because it's legal don't mean it's okay. Do it in moderation if that's your thing and you can handle it, but don't go too far. Um, so there's always, there's always a root problem. Um, we spent most of our lives looking for a chemical solution to a spiritual problem, okay? And once you see a guy make peace with God and form a relationship and believe that Jesus did save him, he starts to change. Sometimes it's fast and sometimes it's slow, but something always changes, amen? Because that's what Jesus does. Thank you guys so much for having us. Um, if you have any more questions, if you know somebody that wants to get in, um, you can reach out to Brother brother Danny. Um, he can get a hold of me, or you can go to our, the easiest way to get a hold of us is go to our Facebook page and just send a message. Okay? Um, like Justin said, we'd love to see people from this area come in because we know there's nothing here. And um, we know that in Jesus' name, we run a solid program that's changed lives. Amen. So thank you all so much. Powerful, powerful ministry. It is. It's different. The way are supposed to be about transformation, and transformation comes in all forms. Yeah. And I thank God for this. Um, there, years ago, I had a woman that I pastored. She'd been married to an alcoholic for 29 years. 29 years. And I mean, he was he was tough. He was tough. He got saved, but it took him two years to overcome that. And you're right. The the um, withdrawals he had. Took him two years to get off of it before their marriage was able to get solid. And now he's been off of that for some 14, 15 years now. But sometimes he help. I want to ask, could, could I have all of Arm 180 and all of you guys come up here? Why don't you stand behind me? We want to support this ministry. Um, we want to do that. And in fact, one of the things that, that I, after when talking to them the other day, and, and they didn't put any requirements on coming over here or anything like that. I don't know if we're going to take up an offer or anything, but I, we're going to take up an offer for this ministry. But I was, I felt like, you know, we, we do world missions every single month at this church, and I thank God for that. We touch some children in Europe every single month. We touch children we'll never see. But then I also think of these young people, or, uh, these guys here in our own country, in our own city, in our own community, even if they're from Mississippi. It's okay. Um, we, um, we, 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 we want to we wanna touch their lives. And I want our church to be a monthly supporter of this ministry because I know it can help people. And I have, I have preached funerals, many funerals of people who died because of addiction. And, um, and so we're going to do that. And um, but we want to support them now. And I, and I look at you, Jeff, um, your grandma did say this today. I have no doubt, but she's very proud. And I believe that. I believe that, Brother Walter. And those prayers have been answered. And those prayers continue to go on. We're gonna we're gonna pray over them. But then I'm gonna we're gonna take an opportunity and we're gonna give you an opportunity to come and lay an offering to give to 180 before we even start supporting them on a monthly basis. That we can that we can help them. Uh, that we can help this ministry. And uh, 
But I want you as a church, would you would you help us pray for these guys and their whole ministry? They got 18 other guys right now that are going through this. And we want to be awesome if, if once a year or so we get to hear them come share testimonies um, in Bible, Arkansas. And maybe some of our young men in Bible, Arkansas who struggle with this can go and come back changed. And that would be such a tremendous blessing. So I want to ask you to stand to your feet. And I want you to stretch your hands toward these guys right here. And I want you to pray over them. And ask God's blessing. Ask God to minister to them. And ask God to continue to help them. I do know this, that prayer works without a doubt. Heavenly Father, we pray right now, dear God, for this ministry. God, I pray for these five men right here, dear God, that, that Lord, that their lives have been changed, dear God. And Lord, that you would touch them and continue to help them, dear Lord. God, I, I just I pray, dear Lord, that you would minister to them, dear God, as they grow in you and as they grow in their life, dear God. I thank you, dear God, for a God that turns people around, that transforms their lives and transforms their spirits, dear God. I thank you, dear God, for a ministry like this. I couldn't possibly do this. But, dear God, that you have that you've anointed Brother Ron, dear God, to do a ministry like this, to touch these men's lives. Dear God, I thank you for that, dear Lord. And I thank you, dear God, for a transformative ministry that turns people's lives around. And God, we pray blessings on them. I pray, dear God, that you open doors for them, that their testimonies get heard. And Lord, we just ask that you would bless them. In the name of Jesus. Now I want you to shut your eyes. I want you to ask God, God, what will you have me to do to help them? If you, if you don't have it and, and you give online, you can give toward our secure gift. We'll mail them a check. And we're going to, because I just believe that this is a worthy cause that we can touch lives and, and minister to them. Heavenly Father, right now, as we get ready to give, Lord, we thank you, dear God, for this ministry. And God, we thank you, dear God, that you're going to plant seed, dear God, and, and it's going to grow, that it's going to touch people's lives. In the name of Jesus. Now, before we give an offering, I want everybody just in your mind, if you can think of somebody you know that's struggling with an addiction, that's struggling with, uh, and, 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 and you know, the addiction comes in all ways. My son works in addiction ministry full time. That's what he does. And he's, he, he's enlightened me on some things. He, he helps young people in what's called a celebrate recovery through the, what they call the landing. He's like, Fifth, fifth graders through twelfth graders is what he ministers to every single week. How on earth can fifth through twelfth graders have, have, have something like this? It happens. They've all many of them have been abused. Many of them go through things, and that's what they deal with. And 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 and, and it, it blows me away. But if you if you know somebody, say you know I know somebody is struggling with some kind of addiction, whether it's chemical, whether it's some kind of a, a pornography addiction, whether it, it, it's it's a gambling addiction. Whether it's a, you know, there's all kinds of addictions out there that people need to recover from. If you know somebody, I want you to raise your hand. And maybe you're one of them. You know what? You can, you can be covered. You can, you can be changed. And let's pray right now. God, we pray right now. You are God that breaks and binds addiction, dear God. Lord, you break chains off of people. We heard that saying earlier today, dear God. Lord, your blood, dear God, it washes away sin from our life, dear God. And we pray, dear God, for people that we know that suffer with addiction and, and things like that, dear God, and things that are holding them back and, and holding them down and keeping them from their families and keeping them from the, living that right life, dear God. Lord, we pray, dear God, that you would bind it and break it and bury that addiction in people's lives, dear God. And Lord, we believe that you can do that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, dear God, we pray. And we believe, dear God, that you are a God that transforms people's lives. That you turn them around 180 degrees when they repent. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to close this service right now. And we're going to close this service by bringing our offerings and laying this up here. And uh, I want you to make sure these guys know. If you want to know more about it, uh, let us know. But I, there's another part. These testimonies are out there. I want to ask you to do me a favor. I want to ask you to get your phone, and I want you to share the service. The more people that share it, the more opportunity this for those testimonies to get seen. 
And uh, you can share it from me through our church Facebook page. You can share it from mine. And, 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 and he said, why would you want to do that? I, I, I believe this is a word that needs to get out. They'll probably get more calls than, than, than you can handle, but that's all right. There, there are people that can do this. But let's honor the Lord. Let's bring our offerings and let's lay them in these buckets. And then let's celebrate this. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>